Hello, hello everyone and welcome to So Much More Fun's Tuesday Technique Session. I'm here today on Facebook Live and I'm just going to leave it for a few minutes just to uh, see if anyone can join live. Um, but while we're waiting for that, I'll just run through a bit of background about what we're going to be covering and um, what we're going to do today. Um, so these sessions are designed to be around half an hour to 45 minutes where we go through uh, some techniques and some tips that I use pretty much every day in my dressmaking um, and that I really want to share with, with you, um, my audience. And if you have any questions or any comments, then please um, say hi as you join and um, let me know that you're here. If you've got any questions, then just raise them in the comments and I should be able to see them this week because I'm using a slightly different format. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the technology is still quite new and I'm still getting used to it. So any patience is appreciated. Um, I'm going to record these sessions as well. So if you are uh, not able to watch this live, then you'll be able to see it in the replay. It'll be posted on the Facebook page and it will also be posted into the um, website. So I've been creating blog posts with these recordings on so that you can see them there. And feel free to leave any comments if you're watching in the replay. Thanks to um, Paola of Me Magenta who left me loads of comments from last week. Thank you so much. Sorry you couldn't make it live, but hopefully you'll be able to make it today. Um, if not, thank you so much for the comments. Really, really helpful. It was great fun to do and we'll be um, taking that idea a bit further today. Um, so any other housekeeping I need to tell you? Uh, yeah, so no um, templates or anything today, but uh, just to let you know that we will, I will be showing you some patterns um, and we'll be tracing some things off. And if you get any kind of ahas from this, from these sessions, even in the replay, then please do let me know and then I can um, post this. So we had quite a few of those last week, different things that different people had seen in the video. Um, different points that maybe people hadn't realized, even people who've been making um, clothes and stuff for a while. So, uh, so yeah, great to, great to see. Uh, so I love reading those. Uh, so please do send them to me. You can either email me or you can direct message me, whatever works best for you. Uh, so just a reminder of the program that's coming up over the next few weeks. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. Uh, so I'm planning to do these on a Tuesday um, and try and keep these going for as long as you find them useful. Um, and so this is the programme that we've currently got outlined. So today uh, we're covering tracing off patterns, why to do it and some top tips on how. Um, and then this will lead nicely into next week's session where we're going to actually just use, uh, talk a bit more about using multi-size patterns and how you can combine different sizes. Because I think sometimes people aren't aware that if you are a different size at the top and a different size at the bottom, then the beauty of dressmaking is that you don't have to use a single size. So we're going to go through how you can use different sizes on your patterns. And then leading into December, we're going to talk about uh, what a toile is and why you would need one um, and then start to look at some common pattern adjustments, uh, lengthening and shortening and then some basic shoulder adjustments. So you can see this on the website um, and it's just in the blog area. Um, look for the Tuesday techniques on Facebook and you'll see the whole program there. And if you want to link to that, then just let me know. OK, so. Um, so for today's session, then, what are we going to cover? Well, I wanted to talk about tracing off patterns. So I use lots of sewing patterns. Um, I use all different variety of sewing patterns. Um, and one of the things that I didn't realize when I first started using them was that um, if you cut them out and you kind of pick a particular size, then if you want to reuse that or you want to make any modifications or change it, or just even practice with different variations of the pattern, then it makes it quite difficult. Um, and so when I started pattern drafting, I realized that actually you can get pattern paper that allows you to trace off these patterns. And what that means is you can keep the original kind of reasonably intact um, and then keep reusing it. And what I have found is that as I start to make pattern adjustments, particularly for fit, sometimes when I'm cutting the pattern up and I'm kind of doing different things with it, a previous version might have fitted actually better and I'll sometimes want to go back to previous versions. So I do sometimes end up tracing a pattern off two or three times um, if I'm just trying different things and trying different fit adjustments. And so it can be really useful for that. 
So I mostly use it with printed patterns, either the patterns that you buy in the envelopes like we saw last time. Um, so I have one of those examples here to show you. So something like this, we're gonna go through this one today. I'm gonna to show you some details of the pattern. Um, and this is, I'm just, I happen to be making this one at the moment. So I just grabbed it because this is one that I'm doing, which is quite relevant. Um, the other time that you would need to use it is some of the magazines um, that you get often have patterns or um, downloads kind of within them. So um, I think Bird of Style is one of those kind of magazines where you kind of get the patterns built in. Um, I like to show you different things. So as a different book this week, I'm going to show you um, Gertie Sews Vintage. So this is a really lovely, a really lovely book. Gertie's patterns are really nice. Um, and in this book, um, uh, she's put the patterns onto uh, sheets that go into the back of the book. Um, so they're in here, but the patterns are printed um, onto both sides of the paper. So um, if you do ever get this book, then don't start cutting them out because actually the patterns are printed on both sides. So you would need to trace these off if you were using this kind of pattern book. So that's the reason why you would tend to use um, sewing patterns. Um, uh, tend to trace them off and so um, and so I just wanted to kind of give you some uh, background as to when you would do it now if you're using a PDF pattern then you don't necessarily need to do that because the joy of a PDF is if you're printing them at home then you can print it as many times as you like but if you decide to use a printing company like a copy shop then again you may still want to um, trace those off uh, so that you can keep your original um, and then keep uh, making your adjustments just on your copies not on your original one OK, so um, let's get into some details then. So what equipment do you need for tracing off patterns? Well, the first thing that you're going to need um, for the method that I'm going to use today is a pinwheel. And um, I have a pinwheel here. So this is what a pinwheel looks like. And you get different variations of these wheels. So you can get a tracing wheel, which is more um, a kind of soft edge, like a metal edge, but it's not got the spikes on. Um, but I found this one, this type with the little um, pointy spikes on it to be the most effective when I'm tracing patterns. And so um, the technique I'm going to show you uses a pinwheel um, and then a cutting mat. So a kind of self-healing cutting mat. And you can get these on um, online in quite a lot of the haberdashery shops and things like that. Um, so I have quite a large cutting mat. I've got, um, I think it's an A to an A1 size cutting mat here that we're going to see that I'm going to be using today. Um, and you can get them down to like really small sizes, but you want something probably I'd say maybe um, an A3 or an A2 size is really useful because it's kind of a, it'll cover about half of your table. Um, so you'll also need um, a pencil and a ruler. So uh, we're going to transfer some of the pattern markings. So I'm going to use my quilters ruler, but you can use any, any ruler um, and then a pencil. Um, now, when I was <laughs> at college or doing my drafting, we used to get told off if we used anything other than a 2H pencil because it's really fine. Um, I'm going to be using some, an HB um, lead today so you can see it on the camera, hopefully. Um, but generally, you want quite a fine pencil because you want to get quite a neat line when you're when you're doing your tracing or doing your markings. So that's just a tip there for you'll need a pencil. Um, you'll also need some kind of pattern weights, something to hold the pattern paper onto on top of your tracing paper. Um, and so I've got some pattern weights here um, and I just made these out of these are washers that I got from a haberdashery uh, from a hardware store. Um, and they're not very expensive. They're just metal um, with a little hole in. And I got square ones. You can get them in all different sizes and shapes and things, but they're quite heavy. And then I used a tip that I saw on Tilly where she just painted hers with um, nail varnish. And so I've just done a few different designs in nail varnish in the colors that I like. So you can make them your own and have fun with that. So we're using pattern weights today as well. Um, you'll need some paper scissors uh and um and i think and then your pattern obviously so and you'll also need some pattern paper so you can trace off onto any kind of paper but i think the easiest way um the easiest paper to use for patterns tends to be around about a weight of about 50 grams per square meter um or gsm so that kind of weight of pattern paper 
um, means that if you didn't have a tracing wheel and you wanted to actually trace and see through, you can just about see through that paper um, if you have to trace it like old school style. Um, so about that weight is good. So the thinner, the better, really, I guess, um, but trying, trying to keep it durable. So there are lots of different places you can get pattern paper from and you can buy it. So I have, I use a lot of it. So I buy it by the roll. So this was, I think, um, I can't remember how big this roll was, but this is a dot and cross paper. Um, and I got this from, I think I got this from William G. Um, and um, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it um, at So Essential, you can get it on eBay, um, or you can just Google sewing pattern paper and you can buy it sometimes by the meter, um, which means it will come like a, just a full sheet folded over, or you can buy it on the roll. Um, and obviously, the more you buy, the cheaper it's going to be, depending on how much you're going to use. Um, but you don't have to buy special paper. So if you've got stuff lying around or you want to stick bits of A4 together, then that will still work um, or stick bits of newspaper together. It doesn't really matter what paper you're using. Um, just try and, you know, use something to hand. So a friend actually gave me um, a friend actually gave me some uh, an old um, flip chart but, uh, pad. Um, and actually, this is great for anything that's kind of the size of a top. So any patterns that you're doing that are tops or skirts, um, probably a little bit small for long dresses. Um, but again, you can stick two pieces together. Um, she wasn't using it. I, you know, so I, I snaffled it because I like big bits of paper. I get through quite a lot of paper. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be using today, just a sheet of that because it's easy to see and I can get it on the screen. Um, so, so yeah, so don't feel like you've got to spend a lot of money on paper, um, you know, look for bargains um, and look for things around the house that you can reuse uh, because that's, you know, that's going to make it more cost effective. OK, so what I'm going to do before we start tracing the pattern off is I thought it might be useful to just have a look at a couple of pattern pieces um, just to see. Uh, I want to just go through some of the jargon and some of the explanation of the information that you're going to need on the pattern pieces and why it's there. So we'll just do that. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to switch to my overhead camera. So it's going to move some of these bits out of the way. So we're going to start with some pieces from this pattern. And the reason that we're going to use this pattern is because it's got a top on here where I can show you some of the details. It's also got a skirt that's got some um, additional notation and information on there. And so that's why we're going to use this one. Um, and I'm actually going to be using the sleeve pattern, which is like a, there's like a little cap sleeve on this top as well. Um, so we're just going to have a look, start by looking at that. So let me just change my camera. There we go. OK, so what we're going to do is have a look at um, this pattern. So uh, let me just find the piece that I want. Here we go. So I've got a number of pattern pieces that I can show you. I'm just going to put it on this white background just to make it a bit easier to see. OK, so hopefully you can see that. So on this pattern, um, there's a few things that I just wanted to point out. So this is a pattern for a sleeve. Um, and a lot of these sort of, a lot of patterns follow this similar format. Now on this pattern, what we'll see is some useful information. So the first thing is we can see the brand of the pattern. So similar to what we see on the pattern envelope that we went through last time. So the, the pattern um, brand and the pattern number are shown here on the outside of the envelope and then they're repeated on each of the pattern pieces. So that's just helpful for us to see, um, you know, if we've got lots of pieces out, which I have now on my desk, then I can make sure they all go back in the right place um, when I want to put them away. The next thing that you're going to see is what sizes it covers. So in this case, it's covering sizes 10 to 18. Um, <clears throat> each pattern piece has its a, a, a unique number for that pattern. Um, it then has a description of what the pattern piece is for. So this is the sleeve for the, the style A and the style D. And again, if I refer you back to the pattern picture, um, you'll notice that the style is shown in a kind of with a little letter, if you can see that um, on the picture. Um, so style B has a different sleeve. Obviously, you can see this is a fuller sleeve and so it wouldn't be used this pattern piece. There'll be another pattern piece for that. Um, it then gives us instructions as to what to do with the pattern piece when we cut it out. So this says cut to a fabric. 
um, and then cut two of lining. So this pattern is a is for a lined um, top. Um, and uh, no, sorry, this this sleeve is lined uh, because it's a cap sleeve. So to get a nice finish around the edge, you would cut two pieces of this pattern. OK, so some other markings that are really important. So on quite a lot of pattern pieces, you'll see this um, line with an arrow um, at the top and the bottom. And this denotes the, the grain line. And this helps us line up the pattern piece with the fabric to make sure that when we sew the garment, it hangs um, with gravity, basically. So the best way to cut the fabric is um, on the grain of the fabric, which is when it's woven, um, you want to use the, uh, the kind of straight up and down um, the warp threads of the of the fabric to line up your pattern too, because then when you when it hangs on your body, then it will hang nice and straight down. Um, and if this isn't, if we don't line this up, then what happens is you'll find if you're wearing something that sometimes happens with cheap trousers or something like that, where it, it feels like it kind of keeps wrapping around or trying to kind of move out of position. Um, and that's sometimes because they haven't they haven't lined this up and they haven't got this on the on the grain of the fabric. So this is really important. And we're going to transfer this marking when we copy our pattern. Um, some of the other things on here, so you'll see there's lots of lines here and each of these lines denotes the size of the pattern that um, <clears throat> the size of the pattern that you want to use. So if you were using a size 10, then you would use this first line. If you were using a size 18, you would use this outside line. Um, and we're going to talk about this more next week, um, about which, which line that you would want to choose based on your measurements um, and how you can combine different sizes um, should you need to do that. So some of the other pattern piece uh, markings that we were interested in. So sometimes you'll see these little circles. And again, they're denoted relative to the size that you're going to use. Um, in this case, on a sleeve, they help us know how to fit the sleeve into the armhole. So this, this dot here denotes where the centre um, of the sleeve is and where it should line up with the shoulder, for example. Um, and you might need to ease the sleeve head in at the top. So these denote kind of where where you're going to have to match that up and where you're going to ease the sleeve. And we would normally use something like a tailor's tack when we transfer these markings to the fabric um, so that um, you know exactly where this is when you've when you've cut your um, pattern pieces out. The other two things to note on here, so we've got some triangles on here and some patterns just use like a little mini straight line. So Tilly patterns, for example, I think she just uses a straight line. Um, but these are called notches. And again, these help us um, know where to line this pattern piece up with the piece that it's going to join to. So in this case, the armhole. So on the corresponding armhole, um, on the front, we'll have a single um, triangle like this one, uh, this notch. And on the back, we'll have this double notch. So these two triangles. And so two triangles or two notches tends to denote the back of something. Um, so you'll see on pattern pieces, um, like the bodice piece, um, you'll see two notches on the back pieces, and then you'll see one notch, um, particularly in the armhole on, a front on the front piece. Okay, so um, so that kind of that, that's the most of the information on this pattern. Some other kinds of markings that you might see. I just wanted to show you another pattern piece. So this is the pattern for the skirt that goes with this. Um, and on this pattern piece, what you've got is um, a different kind of marking. So you'll see here these lines. Um, let's move my little weights out of the way. Um, you'll see here these lines which denote where you're going to sew a dart. This is quite common notation as well. So you'll often see um, kind of where dart lines are. And in this case, you it's kind of subtly moving the dart depending on the size that you're going to make. So you're going to want to look for the dart lines for where you're going to make uh, for the size that you want to make. Um, some things you'll also see are sometimes. Um, so this one is saying that it's three eighths of an inch seam allowance um, uh, just at the, at the waistline. Um, whereas the rest of the pattern will be five eighths. So you often see this kind of notation at the top of the pattern or sometimes at the hem where the hem seam allowance or the hem allowance is bigger 
um, or different to the standard seam allowance for the rest of the pattern. So that again, that's something to be aware of. So again, on this pattern, we've got the brand, the number of the pattern, the sizes that are available. This pattern piece is number 13, and this is the skirt front for view E, and you're gonna cut one on the fold. So again, this denote, this um, arrow here on the straight line, which is, denotes the centre front, um, it actually says here place on or centre fold or place on fold. And again, this is quite common where you see this sort of C-shaped um, arrow. I don't really can see all of that, sorry. Um, uh, so you sort of see this C-shaped arrow and you, that means that you're going to put this pattern piece um, onto the fold of the fabric. So in other words, it's going to create um, a, a sort of mirror image when you then open that out. Some other things that you might see on the pattern are finished garment measurements. So we talked a little bit about this last time. Sometimes they're on the outside of the pattern, um, but sometimes they're written onto the pattern piece. Um, and so here we've got the hip measurement um, for each of the sizes. Uh, and this will generally include any ease. And there's actually a note here that says the total ease above the body measurements is approximately two and a half inches or 6.3 centimeters. And so this can be quite useful uh, to know if you like things that are a bit looser or if you want things a bit tighter, then this will tell you the details of, of that. Um, and another thing that you might see on some patterns where they're designed for um, to have kind of uh, petite adjustments or lengthen and shorten lines, you'll sometimes see this, de this denoted. So a double line um, across the pattern uh, like this usually means this is a place where they recommend that you lengthen or shorten the pattern. Um, and we'll talk about this in the pattern adjustments that are coming up. Um, and in this case, it's making a suggested adjustment of about an inch, which is for um, a petite size. So if you are um, five foot three or below, then it's going to recommend that you fold this over and shorten the pattern by this amount. But you can choose. And like I say, we'll go into this on the lengthening and shortening session um, that we're going to cover. OK, so. Um, so that's that. And then um, we've got the one and a quarter inch um, hem allowance um, shown here. So again, this is just where it's different to the standard seam allowance. It's going to give you a notation. OK, so one other thing I wanted to show you, another type of dart that you sometimes see. Um, is it on this pattern? No. Um, so you'll sometimes see a dart shape, which is kind of like a fish eye. Um, I don't know if I've, oh yeah, here we are. Um, so I just want to show you one more pattern piece and then we'll do the tracing off. So we've got our, um, these darts on here. So they look a little bit different. And again, this is, I think this is where it starts to look a little bit more confusing, but actually um, once you know what you're looking at, it's, it's really straightforward. So again, these are just notations for where you're gonna sew a dart to give some shaping. Um, usually this is under the bust and this is on a, a bodice piece for a dress where it has, um, uh, this is the center front and then you've got these two lovely darts that give a beautiful shape in the um, kind of under the bust. Um, and in this case, um, again, we would trace off these lines so that we know where the darts need to go. And you can see it's got little circles here where we would make some marks with tailor's tacks or something similar so that we know where to, um, we then know where to stitch those darts. Um, and again on here, you can see we've also got a similar notation for the sizing. So this is saying um, size six at the bust is 35 inches um, and at the waist it's 27 inches and so on. And then you've got again, a length and a shortened line here um, as well. So a slight difference on this pattern, I don't know whether you can see it very much, but the, this is a Vogue pattern, uh, a Buttrick pattern, sorry. Um, and you'll see that the line, um, the lines are different. And so sometimes that can be really helpful so that you know which size to make. And again, we'll cover this more on the sizing, but they've got slightly different types of styles of line for the different sizes, which can make it easier to see. Um, and some patterns, um, when you print them as well, can have different colors for those lines. OK, so how do we then trace off our pattern? Well, the easiest way I'm going to go back to my sleeve pattern. So you want to make the best use of your um, 
you want to make the best use of your paper. So I tend to try and use the paper. Sorry, I seem to be losing focus. There we go. Um, trend, trend to try and use the paper economically. Um, so you're going to place. Now, I would recommend that you um, use a warm iron. So if your patterns are really creased, and mine often are, um, and I'm not really very disciplined at doing this, but I'll tell you what you should do and you can follow that. Um, so uh, if your pattern pieces are quite creased, then if you just use a warm iron without any steam, then what you can do is just get some of those creases out. It just makes it easier when you come to trace them off. What you'll also notice is that I've separated the pieces out. So when the pieces come on the pattern, um, they'll come as one big sheet and that can be quite difficult to work with. Um, you wouldn't be able to do that in the book. You're going to have to like the patterns from the Gertie book. You would have to use the sheet in full. Um, but in this case, we can just do a rough cut to include all of the sizes. So you'll see I've just got some space around my pattern piece here. Um, and then I can just trace that off the size that I want to make. <clears throat> so if you're not sure what size, then make sure you tune in or how to choose the size. Make sure you tune in to the later videos that we're going to do in this session. So I'm just going to grab my pattern weights. OK, so you can use your pattern weights. You could just use a tin of salmon or a tin of tuna or a tin of beans or whatever's easiest for you. And all you really want to do is just kind of hold it in place. Um, so I'm just going to put a couple of my pattern weights down there. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to use your pinwheel and you literally. So if you notice, we've got our paper underneath and then we've got our pattern on top. And the reason I like this is because I can see the pattern um, easily without having to kind of try and trace through the paper. Um, the alternative would be that you could put your paper over the top, but it's quite hard to see it. Um, and you can, I have found that if you can put it onto something that's transparent and shine a light through it, then it does make it a bit easier. Um, but, but by far, this is my preferred method because it's so quick. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pick the size. So if, if I say pick the size 14, which is in the middle, then I'm just gonna use my pinwheel and I'm just gonna press down and trace out the outline. Now, what I found is that I tend to do it in a dashed line because as I push, the pattern kind of moves with it. And so to stop it rooking up or anything, I'm just gonna trace around with little um, lines. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm just going around the line uh, the outline of pattern piece number 14. I'm just going to go up here. And, and here it gets kind of quite um, uh, joined up. So I'm just going to do my best to pick the line that I think is the best line. So I'm just going to go through that. And then I'm just going to pull it back this way. Oops. Like that. OK, so while I've still got the pattern in place, I'm also going to trace the grain line because I need to know where that is. So I'm just going to trace that. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just mark these um, uh, these markings here that I need to know. So what I found the easiest way to do with the um, with the notches is just to do like a line through the triangle. So if I do that, then I'll know when I take the pattern piece off, that's a notch. And I just kind of got into the habit of doing that. And then I can draw my triangle back on um, when, I, when I've taken the pattern piece away. And then the last thing I do is I just use a pin and I'll just do a pin prick. So I'm going through the fabric, through the paper on both, both levels. Um, and then I'm just kind of jiggle that around so it creates a bit of a hole. Um, and then the same here and then the same here. And then that's it. We're done. Now. I did some experiments to see if you could see the dots on the um, on the overhead and you can't, unfortunately. So you I'm going to draw them on so that you can see kind of the outline. Um, but when you see this. So now when I take that off, I can see the, that little dotted line all the way around my paper. Um, and although you can't see it, so it's not great telly. Um, uh, it's really useful. Um, so you can kind of see that when you are when you do this at home. So. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roughly, uh, just to prove that I can see it, I'm going to draw this on for you so you can see what I can see. And then when I where I've done those two, um, two lines, I can see where my notches need to go. 
you would do this neater than me. I just want to kind of quickly show you. Um, and so hopefully you can see that um, taking shape. But like I say, it's much, um, it's easy when you do it at home to then, I wouldn't draw, I wouldn't trace this off. I would just cut it from the dots, to be honest. And I would just do my marking. So before I cut it out, um, so the next thing that I want to do is just make sure that I've drawn my grain line from my where my dotted line was. And then finally, just find those little dots um, where I put my pin through for those other little markings. So the last thing that I would do is then um, transfer the information from the pattern while I've got it here before I cut it out. So I tend to write what the name of the pattern brand is um the pattern number the number of the piece in case i need to know that um what it's for so sleeve for stars a and d and then i'll write the size that i have traced so i've traced a size 14 here um and then i can say what i need to do with it to cut to fabric and lining okay and there's my pattern piece traced off and it literally and I, that took me a lot longer than it would take me if I was just doing it without you watching. Um, and that's as quick as it is. So really straightforward. Let's change that back. OK, so um, and that's it. And then you could do the same thing then with your darts as we did with the grain line. So again, you would just trace over where the dart lines are um, and then you could draw, you need to draw those on so that you've got a, a note of where they are. Um, and then literally just cut your pattern pieces out and just rinse and repeat for the number of pieces that you need for the pattern. Now, if you're not sure which pattern pieces you're gonna need, um, then again, you get something in the pattern. I'll just find one. And the instructions are um, that tells you which pattern pieces relate to which styles. Okay. Lost my instructions. Right. Yeah, so on here it will tell you for a given style um, which pattern pieces you're going to need. So you can look in the instructions and it will tell you that information. OK, so um, so make sure you use this this kind of starting piece in the um, uh, in the pattern instructions to tell you which pattern pieces and then those pattern numbers. So the numbers that are on here on these pattern pieces, they're the numbers that we saw um, similar to on this pattern piece here. So those big numbers like number seven here, that's that's what that corresponds to. And so that's how you can work out which pattern pieces you're going to need for the style that you are going to make. OK, so that's everything that I had for you today. Nice and simple. So um, go and give it a go. Fight if you've got patterns that you want to use and you're um, kind of itching to get started. Um, and then what we're going to do is if you've got a pattern that you can use for the upcoming sessions, then as we start to um, go through some of those details and some of those uh, adjustments, then you can be making them um, uh, in a real example as we've been doing, as I've been doing it on the screen. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I'll be back again next week, next Tuesday, to talk through um, how to use a pattern multi-size. So this is about um, if you how to take your measurements um, just really briefly, and then how to use your measurements with the pattern, um, and then on the pattern pieces themselves, how to use these lines to give you a, a really great fit and to give you a good size um, to match your uh, measurements. So uh, I look forward to seeing you then. If you've got any feedback or any comments or any questions, then please send them through. Um, stick them in the Facebook group or on the Facebook page uh, or go to the website and post them in the comments. So until next time, bye for now.